Yep, I was wrong, Stephen. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com, and this is a huge day because this is a real world hands-on preview of the Nikon Z8. That's right, we spent two days with the Nikon Z8, and I say preview because the firmware actually was 1.0. Now, what I think really happens is that 1.0 firmware means that it is really a production model, but because we're using it before it was announced, it gives Nikon a reason to say, oh, well, if something didn't work right, it's pre-production. Nonetheless, we were able to open raw files in Lightroom, which also tells me that this was probably not a pre-production model, but that's beside the point. But where did we take this camera to shoot out in the real world? We did a bunch of shoots. We went into my buddy's recording studio, which was a low light situation to photograph a band. We then went to a Muay Thai gym to get some fast moving action. And then of course we had to go outside in bright ass sunlight to photograph some women's college softball. Truthfully, I wanted to go shoot the Phillies, but Nikon would not let me shoot the Phillies because they kind of thought I might end up on TV, which they would be right about. And people would be like, look, He's leaking a new camera that they would have never known about. Nonetheless, we did use it in the real world. Now I did record the electronic viewfinder so we can take you inside the camera to see exactly what I saw, as well as how the autofocus is working. In terms of lenses, I used the 51.2, 85.12, 14-24, to as well as the 402.8 TC when I shot softball. Now all of the video footage that you're seeing was done with the Nikon Z8, except for what we're using right here, which is the Nikon Z9, and we'll explain to you why that is the case a little later on. Steven used the 24 to 120 f4. He shot 4K, 24P, 10-bit, 422, ProRes HQ. Now, Nikon says that the Z8 is the true successor to the Nikon D850, and I'm like, well, what was the Z7? because I honestly think that the Z8 is far more than a successor to the D850 because you're gonna see that it's stacked, locked, and loaded and is a well-rounded offering from Nikon. Now, you know at the beginning of the video how I told Steven that I was wrong? I was, I was wrong about the specs. I expected this to be a super high megapixel camera to go against the A7R5, something like 61.2 megapixels, and I was pleasantly surprised, but also a little concerned with what they announced, but, but here it is. The Z8 is a Z9. It's literally a Z9 wrapped in a smaller bow. I did not expect that. Now, I know some of the rumors said it might be a stack sensor and have the same things that the Z9 had, but it just didn't make any sense. For one reason, why would Nikon release the same exact camera for less? It might hurt the sales of the Z9. Now, I don't need to fire off all the specs for you because we've made plenty of videos on the Z9 and everybody already knows what that is. But in the Z8, you have the same stacked 45 megapixel sensor as the Z9, the same exact AF and Xpeed 7 processor, the same EVF, the same tilting touchscreen, the same video specs, the same 20 frames per second for stills in RAW, the same 120 frames per second in JPEG. It's all the same that you find in the Z9. That's both good and bad, and we're gonna talk about that by the end of this video. But what is different? Well, one, it's a smaller body than the Z9. It weighs in at two pounds or 910 grams, which is 15% lighter than the D850. So if you have a D850, it's actually gonna be lighter than that. So the difference is you have a Z9 that has a built-in grip and the Z8 does not. Now, with that being said, you can purchase a grip to extend the camera so that you can shoot vertically as well as put a second battery into the camera. But when you do that, the Z8 is now bigger than the Z9. It's taller, which doesn't make any sense because the Canon R5 and the Canon R3 are basically the same height when you do that. So it's kind of interesting that when you throw the grip on it, it ends up being a bigger camera. Now the body feels great in your hands, but it's not as small as a Z6 or a Z7. It is 
kind of like a tank. It's built really well and it feels good in the hands. It's just not a tiny feeling camera. Now you no longer have a top dial for changing your frame rates. You only have two function buttons on the front instead of three. There's no ethernet port, but you do have dual USB-C ports on this camera, meaning you can charge with one and stream with the other. You can also get a dongle for adding ethernet support. It now shoots heave files for some reason. There's a new skin softening mode, as well as a new portrait impression balance feature mode, which lets you change the tone of the skin tones so you can lock it in better for yourself. Most of this stuff is not really that impressive that they've added to it. Like I said, same autofocus, same Xpeed 7. It's basically the same exact camera. And part of it is I was hoping that they would do something more. But on the flip side, this is a $4,000 body. The Z9 is a $5,500 body. So there is quite a difference there and that puts the Z8 into a whole new realm of possibilities. Because when you compare it to something like an R5 or an A7R5, which are in the closer price point, this camera is pretty stacked with the features that it offers. And we don't sit there and say, well, let's compare it to the R3 or the A1 because it's in a different price point. But when you do compare it to an R3 or an A1 or an A92 for that matter, which it blows the A92 out of the water, it does hold its own because it has flagship features and quality in a much lesser priced body. Let me jump in here real quick because I wanna show you this photo taken with the same sensor as an Icon Z9 and edited with Fropac 3 starting with Zoolander, followed by Winnebago, we've got Prestige Worldwide, November Rain, Mount Airy, Mentos, MDMA, King Contrast, Eckert, Capone, Canadian Tuxedo, Almost Famous, Fifth Element, and check this out, my all-time favorite from Fropac One with one click, Skittles, because it's so good for so many things outside. So look, if you wanna speed up your raw workflow or give yourself a great starting point or you're just tired of presets from other people not working, we created 15 custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack3. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Or if you wanna pick up the triple play bundle that includes Fropack one, two, and three and has Skittles, well, you can save even more. Now, let's get back to the video. So one of the ways they made it a smaller body is they used polycarbonates this time, but it's still rugged and strong, but with a smaller body means smaller battery. The battery life on this thing is pretty bad because the battery is so small. Steven went through a full battery in about an hour of shooting video. Now, if you do have a grip, you can put two batteries in there, and Nikon wasn't sure at the time when I was asking them if they're gonna have an option to get a Z9 battery put into this grip, but with that being said, if you're you're gonna buy a grip and you're gonna have to buy a bigger battery and get the charger for the Z9, at that point, for the extra 1500 bucks, you might as well get the Z9 instead of this type of camera. Now, one of the other differences is that you still have two card slots, but they went with a CF Express Type B as well as an SD card slot. Now, I've been doing that with my Canon R3 for a while. I do prefer the same. But again, if you want the dual card slots that are exactly the same, then you just upgrade to the Z9. You have those offerings. And it wasn't an issue when I was shooting raw plus JPEG fine, I didn't run out of space or I didn't run out of buffering at any point when shooting high action or fast frame rates. So the SD card, when you use a fast SD card, is going to be perfectly fine, at least when it comes to stills. Also with a smaller battery, will it retain more heat when it comes to shooting video? Now, Steven did get a card overheating warning when we were shooting indoors at the Muay Thai gym, even though it was a pretty chill day and it wasn't super hot in there. Now he got that warning, the card was actually on fire. Well, it wasn't actually on fire. It was super duper hot. It was the hottest card I've ever felt when we took it out of the camera. And that is pretty hot. So overheating might be a thing that happens with a smaller body. Now, I had no issues whatsoever when it came to overheating when shooting stills. Now that we got that out of the way, what I wanna show you here is taking you inside of the electronic viewfinder to see exactly what I saw when I was shooting in those situations I was shooting in. You're gonna see the good, you're gonna see the bad, you're gonna see the indifferent. We're just gonna show it to you so that you can see exactly what I saw.
So how do you think it did based off of what you saw inside the electronic viewfinder? I know what I think. I think it did exactly what I expected it to do because it's a Z9. I've been using the Z9 for a year and a half and I know exactly what that camera does is exactly what this camera does. So the shortcomings with the autofocus are still there. It still is a struggle when you are shooting with this camera to use the autofocus the way that they intended it to be used. And I always say this, you pick up something like a Canon R8, you turn it on for the first time and you just start shooting and the autofocus knows exactly where to go but when you start shooting with this z8 and of course the z9 it is more of a struggle you saw some of the issues with the focusing boxes not being able to pick up the face when someone is in profile or when the softball pitcher is pitching it's locked on her eye but as soon as she moves as she's coming towards you it hits the glove it doesn't stay sticky or someone runs across the the shortstop and it shifts focus there now that's just pointing out a couple of things because this is still the best autofocus that you'll ever have in a Nikon body up until this point. It still is really good, but it's still not as good as something like the Canon R5, which is now priced less than this camera, but the R5 is better when it comes to autofocus. And the Sony A7 R5 also has that new AI processor, which gives it better autofocus. That's one of the bad things that I see with the Z8, and it's not just the autofocus, it's that Nikon didn't do any incremental improvements to a camera that's a year and a half newer. So what you get here is what you're gonna have to stick with for a couple of years to come. But on the flip side, in this price point, there's no other stack sensor cameras that exist. So when you're getting 20 frames per second and you're shooting super fast action like the softball, I say super fast because the pitchers are throwing really hard, it freezes the ball. If I was to use an R5 and shoot with the electronic shutter to get 20 frames per second, you might get more bowing or distortion happening. So that's one of the pros to a camera like this, to have a stacked sensor is tremendous. The image quality is Nikon image quality. It's fantastic. There's a great lineup of lenses. You've got your expensive 2.8s, you have your 1.2s, but on the flip side, you think they would have updated something like a digital hot shoe that they left out of the Z9. Why wouldn't they just put that into the Z8? Because I don't think a lot of Z9 shooters would be like, oh, I wanted that digital hot shoe. I mean, this is a very good video centric camera, but why does it not have a, a digital hot shoe at this point is a pretty, valid question I think you should be asking. Now, another thing Steven pointed out when he's shooting video is you don't have dual redundant recording for video. The Z9 doesn't have it, the Z8 doesn't have it. Maybe it's a firmware update thing that they can do, but I really need to hammer home this point that no matter how much firmware you update, you're never gonna be able to update the hardware in this camera to make it any better than where it is today when it comes to autofocus. They may have some slight tweaks, but you're not gonna get the same upgrades as when you get an Xpeed 8 processor or some new technology that they decide to add in the future. Now, here's a good point that I wanna show you about the autofocus, because this is my buddy, Will Yip. He's in his studio. This is an action. He's standing right in front of me. I'm shooting with a 14 to 24, and you can see the focus box is right on him. But when I was reviewing the images, it's focused on the background. And that's just something that shouldn't happen. That's unacceptable in a situation where somebody isn't moving, that it just back focuses that bad when it's showing me in the viewfinder that it's in focus. That's one example of it. And it happened again in the Muay Thai gym. I'm focused directly on the subjects sparring and the background is in complete focus. Now that seemed to happen more with the 14 to, to 24 2.8 than anything else. But I also noticed when you're using a 51.2 or an 85.12, it wasn't as accurate when it came to nailing the focus time and time again, like I could do with an R8. Or when I shot Muay Thai with the Canon R3 and an 85 1.2, it nailed the focus time and time again, where in this case with the Z8, which again has the Z9's autofocus, was still lacking in that department. But I don't want to harp on that too much because the quality of this camera is fantastic. If you're a Nikon shooter that's still been waiting for something like this, you are getting a steal at $4,000 for what you get in terms of features in this camera. Flagship features at a much less expensive price. So building off of the flagship features in a less expensive body, the video features of the Z8 
kind of blow the R5 and A7 R5 out of the water. They are fantastic features when it comes to video. Now we still personally prefer using the Canon cameras when it comes to video, but these are solid cameras when it comes to shooting video and the autofocus was good enough. Steven didn't really have major issues when shooting and tracking me that he said the focus was fine. So that is a good thing. Oh, and, and you're watching me with it right now. So if it goes out of focus and isn't following me, that's because the Z9 went out of focus and their autofocus is lacking. But if not, it works really well. Let me jump in here real quick and let you know that this video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you're looking to build your very own online portfolio, use what I've been using for jaredpoland.com for more than 10 years at this point because it's simple, easy, affordable, and I don't need to know coding. I guarantee you, you can have your own personal website up in a matter of minutes. To get a 14-day free trial, head on over to squarespace.com slash photo. If you decide that it's for you, use the code photo at checkout to get 10% off your first order. Go ahead, give it a shot. At the end of the day, this I think is a big win for Nikon and Nikon shooters who have been waiting. I mean, if you're still sitting around with a D850 and you haven't gone mirrorless yet, I mean, this is the camera for you. This is a fully well-rounded camera any way you slice it. I don't care if you shoot landscapes or weddings or sports or brisses or births or anything, action, something slow, you shoot video, it's so well-rounded that it's not even funny in its price point. It does make me question, what will a Z7 III be? And honestly, I don't think there will be a Z7 III. Because how can you come out with a 30-some hundred dollar camera when this is 4,000? If you're trying to decide between a Z8 and a Z9, being that they are exactly the same, other than the body size and the few things that I've said, if you're gonna add a grip to it, which is gonna be 350-ish bucks, plus having to get at least two extra batteries at a time because you want at least three batteries because the batteries get chewed up much quicker, you may wanna consider just going straight for the Z9 at that point. It's gonna be smaller than having a grip on it. So for the extra couple hundred bucks at that point, maybe it's an extra 750, $800 all in, the Z9 might be a better option. And I don't think Z9 shooters should be upset that they spent $5,500. Actually, they should probably be upset that they spent $5,500 and this is now $4,000 and they could have gotten away with it to get the same quality. But nonetheless, it's a win for Nikon here because in the price point, with the features that they have, this is a good holding place for Nikon to build off of, right? They have something capable here. It's what they do next which is going to really define the next five to 10 years and if they're still in business. Because what will the lower end cameras be? Will they start going stack sensors on something lower and less expensive? It's a big win that they were the first to go stack sensor in this price point. It's insane. They did a great job. That's what I have to say about it. I'd like to hear what you guys have to say about it. Leave some comments down below. If you'd like to pick up this camera at Alan's camera, the link is also in the description. Thank you guys very much for watching. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.